Hi, my name is Craig Johnson, and this is a technology support training video. Uh, it's a second video of two videos that um, describe how to use Norton Ghost 2003 to back up and restore computers. In the other video, I described how to use Norton Ghost to restore a computer after you've already backed it up. Maybe you've had a hard drive crash or virus or whatever, you can restore it. And keep in mind, it's restoring the operating system, the programs, and any files that you would have backed up when you made the image. So it completely wipes out the computer. You need to make sure if you're using this product, you don't accidentally erase everything, because that's what's going to happen. So anyway, all you need to have uh, this work is an external hard drive, like I have here. You want to have that plugged in before you even turn on the computer. And hopefully, when you turn the computer off, you remember to keep the drive open so it's easy to insert this boot CD. Okay, Norton Ghost 2003. We're going to put that CD in there. And then in this set of instructions, it'll just take a few minutes, I'm going to show you how to back up a computer. And ideally, it would be a, a new computer that's you've configured it just how you want it with your printer and your network connection or whatever, and uh, all the software you need, and then you back it up. So you have like this snapshot of what your computer looks like in its perfect condition, and then if anything happens to it, as I say, you can restore from that. So we're going to back up now. And... Um, I'm going to turn on the computer. This is a Dell, so a common standard for Dell is as soon as the computer is turned on, there's going to be a little message that appears up here in the upper right-hand corner that says press F12 for a boot menu, which means it'll give you an option to boot to the CD drive, to start to the CD-ROM, and that's what we want, but you have to act quick. There are a number of steps here you're going to have to really kind of pay attention as you're going. So I'm going to power it on and then immediately start pressing the F12 key, and you'll notice I'm pushing it and lifting up and pushing it. Um, because if you don't do that, it's just going to skip past this and try to go on into Windows. And now I have the boot menu, okay, and there's some instructions here, but basically I want to press the down arrow twice and choose CD, DVD, CDRW drive. So I'm booting up to the CD, and then press a key to boot from CD or DVD. So I had to do that kind of quick. It was F12, and then press a key to boot to the CD after choosing the CD drive. And now here, Again, I'm on a timer. It's counting down eight seconds to go. I have to go to option four, load USB 2.0 drivers. Okay? And as soon as I press that, it'll start to, uh, and then press enter, it'll start to load these. Now, take a look here on the screen. It says installed successfully. Uh, it's listing off a number. And then you'll see possibly even some errors. Failed diagnostics, um, installation failed, uh, installation failed, not loaded, etc. You'll see a lot of ominous errors. You can ignore those. It just means that there's some software here that just doesn't apply to your computer as it's starting. Okay. Um, I know that went quite kind of quick. I'm just going to recap. You turn on the computer. You press F12. You get the boot menu. You arrow down and then press Enter on the CD-ROM drive. That will bring up the actual CD boot process. And it says press the key to boot to the CD. So if you skip that, if you miss that part, it'll go into Windows, so make sure you press a key at that moment, then you'll get the Start menu. You'll go down to Option 4 to choose USB 2, press Enter again, and then the process starts, and you get this far, you get to the A prompt, and this is kind of old-school DOS language, but uh, basically I'm going to type in, at this point, the letter C, and then a colon, and then I'll press the Enter key, and what that does is it switches over to the, the hard drive, the C, the C drive. And now I want to change into the directory, it's called a support directory, so I'll type in cd space support and then press the enter key over here. All right, and once I'm in the support directory, then I can type in ghost and press enter, and from here on out, it's going to be a little more friendly. It'll be mouse driven. I'm on a notebook computer, so I'm just going to use the touchpad to maneuver the mouse. So you go ahead and click OK. And then from this menu here, and I'm going to go kind of quick because you can always pause this. You can play it back, kind of get these steps down. Um, but I'm just going to kind of condense this really quickly. We're going to go to local and then disk because I'm backing up a local disk. And I'm going to back it up to an image. Make sure you don't choose disk because you'll wipe out the uh, disk you're, you're writing to. So I'm going to say local disk to an image. And most of the default settings should be fine. It's saying, well, I'm guessing that you want to back up drive one, which is 28 gigabytes. That's the internal notebook hard drive. Okay, that's fine. It says, where do you want to back it up to? Now, notice that I've selected, uh, by default, it's selecting this LMC DOS 80, but it's not listing anything there. It's kind of a quirk with Ghost. You have to click this menu, drop down, choose that drive again, and then it'll actually display the folders. Don't ask me why. Don't know why it is, but that's the way it is. 
you click once on these folders to maneuver through them. So I want to go to the images folder, so I'll click once on that. And then, since this is a Dell, I'll click once on Dell. And this is where there's some folders where you can put things. I'm not going to put this in the D600 folder yet. I'm just going to leave it at this top level. So file name, you just type in a name. I usually use the model of the computer. I ignore, for now, the, the model um, line, latitude, and just the model number. D600 is what I'm going to call this. And then I'll click Save. Um, and uh, actually, that's, that's uh, going into a folder. Let's just back up. Sorry about this. We'll just put it at this top level here. Um, so D600. Wherever you want to put the, the file is fine. And then you can move these around later if you have multiple images. So then I'm going to click Save. And it says, do you want to compress it? Uh, yes or no? And if, if so, fast or higher compression? I'm going to choose fast. Okay, and then proceed with image file creation, yes, and it starts. It's that easy. And so uh, once this is completed, it says it's going to take about five minutes, five or six minutes. Once it's completed, you'll get a message on the screen, and, and you can go ahead and click OK and, and back on out of this and exit out. And that's basically it. Now you'll have an image on that hard drive that you can later move into a folder, and the folder might say something like, you know, images, Dell, latitude, and then D600 would be the file name. There may be more than one file. These files can be up to 2 gig in size, so if it's larger than 2 gig, you'll have a part 2, part 3, part 4, you know, multiple files that are the image for the computer. Anyway, if you have further questions, as I say, refer to the website, and uh, hopefully this will help by having a visual to see how this is done. Take care.